Greetings, everyone. My name is Jim Klingman, and many of you probably have seen my show here on uh, Media Bridges, and uh, we are delighted to be with you once again. And this is the first show of 2009 that we're presenting to you, and we are very, very pleased and honored to be able to bring this show to you. We're going to couch this show uh, in, in terms of black history, as some of you may remember, last year we did a three-part series on, on, on black history, and we concentrated on the, the, the history of black business in Cincinnati and around the country. So uh, uh, we're honored once again to start this year off to talk about black history. And I, for one, don't believe in this one month only black history stuff. So we're going to talk about black history, as we do on this show all the time. But this is a very, very special show. And uh, I am uh, once again honored, delighted, privileged to uh, be able to, to, to share this time with you and with my very, very special guest. Um, I, I, I'm struggling trying to come up with the words to, to introduce our guest. Uh, many of you will know him, at least by his name, but many of you will not know all of the things that this black man has done here in Cincinnati, Ohio and even before he got to Cincinnati, Ohio. You know his family. You know the accomplishments of some of his family members, some of his children, but you don't know, you probably don't know uh, uh, the, the tremendous amount of information that uh, comes along with our special guest. And his name is Dr. Herbert Smitherman. Ah, Smitherman, huh? There he is again, <laughs> Smitherman again. <laughs> Dr. Herbert C. Smitherman. Uh, I'm going to let him give you some information about how long he's been in Cincinnati and where he came from and that kind of thing. But I'd like to say here publicly that uh, I have known Herb Smitherman, oh, probably about 15 years. Uh, he and I worked together uh, when we were starting the Entrepreneurship High School about uh, nine years ago. And uh, uh, it, it's just been uh, a pleasure to watch him and his family progress. Uh, little did I know that I would be working as closely with his son, a couple of his sons, uh, uh, nine years ago. But, uh, you know, things take their proper course in the proper time. So I want to, to talk to Brother Smitherman and give him an opportunity, of course, to, to just lay out the, the, the backdrop of what we're going to talk about. And then we're going to probe and ask, ask him some questions about his life. And uh, uh, we pray that uh, you will be enlightened. I know you will be because there are some things that, that he shared with me already that uh, I'm sure that most of the people in Cincinnati don't even know about. And we need to share our history. Our children need to see what our history is all about. And, and, and in Brother Smitherman, our history is personified. We can see it, we can touch it, we can listen to it. And, and that's when we should uh, appreciate it the most. So we're going to uh, uh, be blessed with this show. And I have another special guest <laughs> with me who's going to help me with this interview because, of course, he's been with uh, uh, Herbert C. Smitherman for about 40 years now. And uh, his name is Christopher Smitherman. And he's here with me as well to help me get through this because I will ask uh, some questions of Brother Smitherman. But, of course, Christopher has some different kinds of insight into his father uh, and, and the life that he has led. But let me say before I start that uh, this family, I appreciate this family in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I've often told Christopher and his brother Albert that I appreciate his parents, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smitherman, because I have personally come to know three of the brothers uh, in the Smitherman family and worked with a couple of them. And I know for a fact that these brothers have been taught well by their parents. And I always tell Christopher, I joke with them all the time, I say, you tell Mom and Pa Smitherman, they did a good job. They did good. <laughs> uh, and I've talked to Albert Smitherman and, and, and his character and the way he carries himself and the way he um, uh, stands up for what's right and does what's right. And, and, and the example that he sets here in Cincinnati as being an entrepreneur uh, with Jocelyn Concrete Company. I just appreciate that, and I appreciate this family. And I know you will, too, as we go through this interview and you find out more about uh, 
Dr. Smitherman and the things that he has done here in Cincinnati. So let me say welcome to Brother Herbert C. Smitherman. Good yeah. to be with you, bro. <laughs> Thanks you. Thank you very much, Jim. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I'm I want born. you. I want you to just give us. You know, just settle back. This is kind of going to be informal. You know, I'm not a formal kind of person. We're just going to have a conversation. <laughs> okay. All right. And you can take it where you want it to go. Okay. I'm going to start back um, uh, with my birthplace, which was Birmingham, Alabama, and many of you out there might be from Birmingham, Alabama, and know something <laughs> about it. But I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, my father was uh, Reverend O.C. Smitherman, and my mother was uh, uh, Mrs. Alberta Smitherman, and my grandmother was Annie Smith. My father was pastor of a church in Birmingham, Alabama. <clears throat> I attended Parker High School, uh, graduated from Parker High School, and after graduating from Parker High School, I attended Tuskegee Institute. Mm. Um, I received a B.S. degree in chemistry from Tuskegee Institute. But what you may not know is that I started taking music lessons when I was four years old from uh, W.C. Handy's nephew. Wow. <laughs> and uh, and uh, my father played a clarinet. Mm -hmm. He always wanted me to play a clarinet, so I was taking music lessons to learn to play a clarinet. And actually, when I went off to college, to Tuskegee, I went to major in music, but they had eliminated the music program, mm. and I took my second choice, which was chemistry. So after four years, I graduated with a BS in chemistry. Uh, during that time, I met uh, Barbara Flowers, uh, Barbara Flowers at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, Barbara became uh, Miss Tuskegee. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I graduated in 1958, and I started graduate school uh, working on a master's degree in chemistry at Tuskegee. I received a master's in chemistry in uh, 1960, uh, and uh, Barbara and I were married in 1959. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> after uh, receiving my degree in chemistry, and Barbara and I were married, uh, uh, Herbert Jr. was born a year later, um, and we moved to Texas, and my first job teaching was at Texas Southern University. And when I graduated, I had a uh, commission in the Army. Uh, so I, after being out of the, uh, being in the reserve for two years, I was promoted to first lieutenant in the Army re Reserve, and then after being at Texas Southern for one year, I went in the service for two years. Um, and after two years in the service, I came out and enrolled in Howard University to pursue my doctor's degree. Mm -hmm. That was 1963. Hmm. And I got my degree in, 19, in May of uh, 1966. I was the 10th. Uh, person to get a degree in chemistry from Howard University. A PhD. PhD hmm. in, from Howard University in uh, 1966. And I was recruited by Procter & Gamble in 1966 to come to work uh, for Procter & Gamble. All right. I want you to stop right there at Procter & Gamble because okay. I want to pick that apart, but I want to go back <laughs> okay. in your history because there's a very significant thing. I've talked to Christopher about this. There's a family that is listed in the Oklahoma City Historical uh, Society and uh, where they're doing the Tulsa uh, riots. Okay. Smitherman. Right. He had a newspaper. And I called Christopher. I saw a picture of him when I was out there the, at the Greenwood Culture Center. I said, do you know any of these folks uh, in Oklahoma City? Did you come from Oklahoma City? He said, no, he came from Alabama. But I said, well, I think these folks migrated up there from Alabama or somewhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the picture was strikingly close to, to Christopher. This has been about five years ago. Mm -hmm. and uh, But I wanted to, to ask you about that. Did you know any of the Smithermans in, that, that went to Oklahoma City? Or have you heard about that? that uh, yes. Uh, there is a Smitherman. His name is James Smitherman. He's in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. And we've had some conversations back and forth mm. over a period of time. We think that there is a relationship between his family and our family. Mm -hmm. 
um, <clears throat> my father's, uh, my uh, uh, grandfather's name was Roy Smitherman. Mm -hmm. And um, and we think that there is a, we think that Roy Smitherman um, uh, had a brother who whose family may have migrated to Oklahoma. Tulsa. Okay. And so we've been we've been working yeah, on that yeah. uh, and not as intensely as we should yeah, have. Yeah. But yeah, we I, I think there is could a relationship be a connection there. there. Yeah, yeah, it could I be a connection there, is. there. That's that's interesting. The other thing I wanted to point out, you said you married Barbara who was the the queen, right? That's right. So that makes that's, you what, a player back there? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he, took, he took the queen, the captain's I queen. I that's right. <laughs> See, when, 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 when she was running for, when, when she was running for Miss, Miss Tuskegee, the, the theme was, uh, uh, let's see, what was the theme? The theme was uh, Barbara Flowers for Miss Tuskegee and everybody's picking flowers. Have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher, you can jump in any time. Oh, you know, right. I'm having fun already. And, and I'm going to leave the mama thing alone. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Now, one other thing I'd like to point out, that I pointed out the, uh, the, the family. And the example, another example that you said is that if I'm correct, this year, 2009, you'd be married 50 years. And that's correct. 50 that's years. significant. Very yeah, that is 50 significant. Years. Yeah, I wanted to go back and mention um, a couple of things mm -hmm. um, along the way about uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. I, I think that it's extremely important for people to know that I think that the core values that I developed during the time I was growing up in Alabama that have served me well, and I still use them today. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in my community, uh, number one, trust. I think that uh, trust was extremely important. Um, I think that networking was extremely important. Yes. Collaboration was extremely important. Um, we, uh, uh, sharing uh, what you have, uh, mm -hmm. Sharing with each other right. was extremely important. If someone came out and their car wouldn't start in the morning, you'd have four or five people there trying to help get the car started. Yes. If the car wasn't started, you'd have somebody volunteer to take the person where yes. they were going. And uh -huh. there was nothing sp spoken about money, uh -huh. fees, uh, anything mm -hmm. like that. I mean, people just kind of worked together and, and built a community together. We were all poor. We mm -hmm. just didn't know it, yeah. uh, because everybody was in the same. same. Mm -hmm. Everybody was in the same shape, mm -hmm. uh, but we, by, but by working together, and uh, setting goals together, and solving problems together, we were able to accomplish a lot in my community, mm -hmm. and I think that I have carried those values in terms of the importance of building relationships, the mm -hmm. importance of trust, the importance of commitment, the importance. Yes of, you know, you know you, you making sure that your word is your word yes, kind of thing. Right. I that's think right. I've carried those things forward and I've tried to teach my children those things. Well, you've done an excellent job. I can attest to that personally. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I'm sure it's going down to the, to the other generation after your children as being passed on to them as well. And that's, that, that's really important. Those values that you develop when you're young and you're going through some things, right. that's what makes you what you are later on in life. And how did you get to go to college? You say we were all poor. Then how did you get to go to college? How were you able to do that and then go on to get a master's and then a PhD? The, the one thing that uh, uh, was evident during my growing up years is that uh, the older uh, generation wanted to be sure that we did that our generation did better than they did. Mm -hmm. And they emphasized that education was the way out. That's right. And they had various ways of demonstrating it. My father demonstrated it to me by taking me to a construction job where they had an, uh, they were using an air hammer. Mm -hmm. They were breaking up concrete. Wow. <laughs> and uh, he looked at me and he said, hey, Bo, you know, if you don't go to school, <laughs> you, you might end up with a job like that. that. Heavy, well, yeah. I haven't stopped reading since. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and in Birmingham, out on the streets yeah. and the concrete, oh, yeah. man, that yeah. been something. those uh, things weighed a lot, things, too. Those, those things would shake you to death. Yeah, you know? yeah, That's yeah. It. So you're talking about incentive. You're talking about uh, 
being uh, inspired by example. You're talking about motivation. Right. It comes from within. Right. You want to do something. That's that's part of the message that we should be giving to our children as and, well. And, and, and not only my parents, but, uh, you know, we today collectively say that a village should raise a child. We actually practice that. Yeah. When I was yeah, growing up, yeah, I mean, yeah. I could be ten miles away from home. I wouldn't 